Hi everyone, it's Aaron Laurie. We've just come out of staying for a week in Quito. We thought we'd share with you some of the cost of the items or the costs that we incurred in the week that we were there in late 2022. This is Plan Free, the channel that illustrates a location independent lifestyle. And today we're going to walk you through some of the costs we incurred while staying in Quito, Ecuador. That's right. We visited for a week. We weren't like fully immersed living there. And this list is not a comprehensive list of all the things that you can buy, internet, utilities. It's just our costs for the week that we visited Quito. So the first cost that we incurred was accommodation. We had to rent somewhere. So we found a few suitable places and communicated on uh, the Airbnb and uh, we were careful about it but we negotiated a, a deal off of Airbnb. So we paid for our first night on Airbnb and then the rest was cash um, when we met the lady in person. The total cost that we paid for our Airbnb for the week was 141 US dollars. About 564 for the month or 760 Canadian for the month. Again, we stayed just the one week, 141 US. Yeah, if you were to book, or let's say inquire about a monthly rate in the same situation, you'd, you'd likely get a better rate than what we paid. Yeah, and it was a two bedroom. One bedroom was a really good size. The other bedroom was kind of a kid's bedroom. It had just a single bed in it. Bathroom was very tiny, but it did have a full kitchen area and an office space and a laundry room. So it had more than we needed to feel really comfy. So the second expense that we incurred while living in the city is food. Now, of course, food is an expense that you incur in wherever you're staying. But we listed it here just because we're curious every time we go to a new city, particularly I'm curious, as to what things cost. And so we signed up for the app called Rappi. It was very handy. First of all, we ordered groceries to the house, so things that I could prepare at home. And we did this two times. We spent 23.16 US the first day and then 33.04 the second day. So that's 31 Canadian and about 45 Canadian. And that fed us for two to three days. It was snacks, breakfasts, lunch, you know, anyway. So that's pretty inexpensive for a couple of days worth of groceries. The second thing that we used Rappi for is on one of our last nights, we didn't want to cook, took a break. We decided to order some good old fast food, KFC, KFAC. <laughs> Uh, and it was more expensive than we thought. It was 15 US and that, it did feed us both, but it's not our normal speed to spend 15 US on some fast food, but it was super fun. And we've seen that pretty much across the board. Anytime we live in an international country, anytime we want to eat like something that we would recognize from back home, yeah. you're always going to pay a premium for it. If you're eating local food, you're more likely to pay local prices. Now, talking about local prices, I did want to also mention that we decided to wander the streets in our little neighborhood and the best value was from a sweet little cafe on the corner from our apartment. It was local. We met lots of Carloses and Marcoses and Hugos when we dined in there and that was the most affordable meal. Uh, the night we arrived and got off the plane, we were starving and tired and we went in, we ordered two coffees and shared a lunch and it came with two course lunch, a big bowl of soup, and then another chicken mushroom sauce thing with rice and everything, and it fed us both, and that was six US. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty good. Uh, a few days later, we went back to the same little Ecuadorian place. We spent five US, and we had each ordered a breakfast. I think Air got a plate of, it's called verde, and I had a plate of scrambled eggs, um, a juice, and that was a total of five US for two meals. Mm -hmm. So eating local, we didn't incur much cost, but that just gives you an idea of the variety of different ways you can eat. If you're getting value from this content, now's a great time in this video to press the like button. We didn't join a gym when we were there, but we walked around and talked to a lot of people. It was $3 US for a drop-in a day rate. It was $10 US for a week, which we almost considered. Maybe should have. Maybe should have. Uh, and it was 30 US for a month. Yeah, I would say that compares favorably. I think probably in Canada, we're looking for a decent gym. You're probably looking at $50, $80 a month. We used an Uber almost everywhere we went. But in our travels, I glanced up at the cost of gas because I'm always just kind of curious of cost of living stuff. And it was $4.19 US per gallon for the highest octane and $2.80 per gallon for regular gasoline. 
So one of the reasons we actually went to Quito and decided to visit for a week was because we had some dentistry to take care of. We needed teeth cleanings we were due um, and then during the cleaning we found out there were some other little things. So um, they range, I had checked from back home in Canada for prices on Google in Quito for dental cleanings and they range, they range, I found some for 40, 30, 25 and for some reason I found the clinic that we went to $10 US for a cleaning. I thought, oh man, we gotta give this a try just for nothing else but to see what the heck $10 gets you. It was wonderful. It was fast, efficient, high tech. Uh, they used the UV lights and the, I don't know all the name of the equipment, but it was an excellent cleaning. It was very efficient. What does she look like, a dentist? Wait, I'm not a dentist. So while we were getting our cleanings done, we were told that there was some um, cavities that could probably be addressed. So we got some pricing and we did get some work done too. Small cavities were $10 US, large cavities were 20 US to get filled. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna tell you our total bill, <laughs> <laughs> but that's just price per cavity and price per cleaning. Mm -hmm. Now to, to give you some sort of reference or comparison, the we almost never, we never visit our dentist in Canada anymore. We're not employees or business owners, so we have no benefits. So we, we have to pay everything out of pocket, straight cash. So for the last 10, 12 years, we've been doing all of our dentistry visits internationally, whatever country we've chosen to live in that winter. And so the last time we were in Canada for cleanings was like I say, a decade ago, and it was $280 Canadian per person for a cleaning. Compare that with the $10 per person that we're talking about here. And you can start to see the difference and the cost savings that yeah. you could have if you're open to having dental work done in other countries. And in this case, Ecuador. Yeah, it was a lot. They needed to have a, an x-ray of air's mouth for some of those cavities and we paid 15 US for, for the x-ray that they needed. So again, just the costs are so much better. Mm -hmm. We also Ubered to and from our dentist appointment, US dollars, $2.81 one way and then $4.43 to come back because it was higher demand time. A total of $7.24 US to get there and back, under 10 Canadian. And uh, I think we have a friend in Miami I was chatting with, an acquaintance, and he had taken an Uber a half a mile to a mile and it was 25 US dollars so the uber in Ecuador in Quito anyway was an excellent value mm -hmm. well it wasn't always work when we were in Quito yes we did um, book a week there because of the dental work but we did have some time to do some leisurely activities as well do a couple of touristy things and so we did incur some costs doing that and uh, we'll share those with you as well. We went to Mita del Mundo, which is the middle, middle earth. Basically. <laughs> middle earth. It's the equator line. I really wanted to go and see that. So we Ubered there and back and then we paid for some entrance fees to a couple of different museums that were close to each other. Two people, two museums, as well as the Uber. We did the entire thing for $34.55 US. Mm -hmm. So that was the activity that we did for Lori. She really wanted to do that. Yeah. And then she was nice enough to join me on something I really wanted to do, which was Yanacocha Reserve. It's a noted bird reserve uh, and known for having multiple different species of exotic hummingbirds. And so what were the costs that we incurred there? The cost we incurred to go to Yanacocha was, again, we hired an Uber driver one way and the price showed on the screen just below 10 US. So I knew I wouldn't have Wi-Fi, so I chatted up our driver and I said, look, we'll pay you cash, would you be willing to come back? Absolutely no problem. He was such a nice young man. So our Uber there and back was 20 US and then our entrance to get into that reserve was 5 US each. So our total day was 30 US. And the Anacocha Reserve is like an hour west of Quito, so it was a lengthy drive. And for all of that for 20 US is a good It was value. a great deal. Not to mention that you're going basically straight up the mountain, so the roads you know, they turn into like a, like a four by four trail almost uh, after a certain amount. And he's going up there with his little car and he's doing well because he knows the roads. Mm -hmm. But for $20 US, the guy was on time when uh, we arranged a, a return pickup. And Lori and I were just carefree. We didn't have to worry about on our way up or on our way down. He was just very reliable. And so we probably could have saved a few bucks if we tried to go taxi and or bus or a combination of, or we could have spent 10 times that amount on a private driver, but for us, that sort of in between mm. with the Uber was a good value yeah. in our minds. A couple of other small costs that I wanted to share with you to give you further reference was bouquet of flowers. A nice bouquet of flowers in Quito City Central or the main city would be about three to five dollars US. So very good price for a nice bouquet of flowers. 
but I've got a tip for you that will probably save you even more money and for sure give you more variety of what's available. There's a neighborhood of Quito called Nayon, and if you drive and spend some time there, you'll find probably 70 to 80% of the businesses and shops there are all about flowers, potted plants, that sort of thing. So uh, you're gonna find more variety of what you can buy there. And I think the Uber driver said what on the cost? Uh, something like one or $2 for the bouquet. So basically almost half the price, let's say, of buying flowers at an already good price mm. in the middle of Quito. Most of the items that we've been talking about so far have been, let's say, a good deal or a reasonable deal. I'm gonna give you one item here that's on the flip side of that, and that is our apartment in Quito was a little bit chilly, but it did have a fireplace, so we were very much looking forward to having a little fire in there, taking the edge off and warming up a bit. So Lori did some poking around, found some wood vendors, and the best deal she could find was for a bundle of wood for $10.75 US delivered. It was nice to be able to have a fire, but I will say that we felt like that was not a good deal. 1075 US for an armful of wood. Keep in mind, these are just some of the costs that we personally incurred. If you've got other costs, we'd love to hear about them. Like, did you get your hair done, beard trimmed, some clothing washed or something? Just share it with us below in comments. Yeah, did you buy internet? Have you purchased a car? Other things that you felt like we should have touched on in the video that you have incurred in your time in Quito, Ecuador? Go ahead and add them in the comments. We recommend you watch this video next. My name's Air. I'm Lori. This is Plan Free. If you like what we're talking about in this video, go ahead and click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel for free, click subscribe and then click the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. We'll see you again in the next one soon. Bye for now. Bye for now.